Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Alana Perez, the CGI Nerd, and in this video we're going to be going over how to attach the skeleton of the character to the mesh geometry of the character or the skin of the character. So we're going to go in, we're going to take the mesh and the geometry, combine them together, we're going to talk about how to use uh, the capture joint by harmonic to be able to um, get that to happen and then adding a rig pose, a joint deform to be able to get the character moving and show that it does work and by the end we'll have a character that can be moved with the skeleton and the skin mesh moves with it. It's not going to be beautifully weight painted but I will show you how to paint weights and go through in detail and paint the weights for your character if you wanted to tweak the weights that come in by default but that is what we're doing today, so let's get started. Hey everybody, uh, today we're going to capture the character so that we can use the skeleton to move the character around. Uh, for this video, all you need is a character and a skeleton, and if you need um, help creating those, I can put links to the previous two videos down in the description below and um, that will guide you through the process of creating a uh, character mesh and a skeleton. Um, and basically, if we jump into this node, um, the skeleton video covers this part where we created the skeleton for the character. And then in this version, you can really use any character mesh, but um, I just did a procedural character mesh here. Um, in the videos, we only went through doing the body, the arms, the hands, the fingers, and the feet. Um, I didn't create a head. I, at the time, I didn't feel like I wanted one, but I changed my mind. So um, basically, if I just change over to the proxy model so that it runs over faster, I can start kind of adjusting attributes and change the um, profile of the character um, based off of the curves. So there is nothing too crazy about this. It's just kind of connecting a lot of the stuff that we had before. But in the end, the result, all we need is the out character geo and we need a skeleton. So now that we have those, all we need to do is do a joint capture by harmonic. And we're going to connect the, um, rest geometry, which is our mesh in the first position, so it's in the T pose. The second one is our capture pose, which is the um, uh, the skeleton in that same T pose. And here you can see that it connects everything automatically. Um, by default, what we end up on the left-hand side here is your character mesh, and it's showing you the weight distribution between all of the joints. And then on the right-hand side here, we have a tetrahedral mesh, and this tetrahedral mesh is going to be used. Basically, you get your skeleton, and then from there, it finds the shortest point to the surface of the geometry um, using the tetrahedral mesh. Um, and you get better deformations because of that, um, and you don't have issues like where the finger right here, for example, like this joint might be close to this finger, um, and you get spillover weight, but because it's using the tetrahedral mesh, it goes that way, but it can't get all the way to the other finger unless it goes into the hand and comes back out this way. So it limits a lot of the need to like weight paint, a lot of nuance type things like that. Um, but the third input here is for animation. Like I said, we don't have any animation here, but I found that it's just easier to, um, to connect it in at this point, um, and then add in any animation in the future. If you had a separate animated skeleton, you can do that there at this point, but, um, I don't have that here, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, then... Let's look at deforming the mesh so that we can see how it deforms. What we're going to need is a uh, joint deform. And we have three inputs, and they go straight up to the previous ones. They're the same inputs that we need, the um, rest geometry, the um, capture pose, and the animation. So if we visualize this here, um, this will work. Um, the only thing is that we don't have any movement or animation. So what we can do is do a um, rig pose 
And if we connect that into the third input here, we can um, select a joint and rotate it and things like that. And it will deform and move. So that is fun and amazing. Boom, boom, boom. We have a good deformation there. Um, so a lot of times you'll see that you might want to tweak some of the weights. Usually here in the chest you'll want to, but that one is pretty okay. I did notice that my elbow, I could probably get a little bit better geometry on here, um, like more segments when I created it. Oh, and I didn't switch back over to my uh, final geometry, so let me do that. I switch over to my final geometry, and everything works because it is procedural. Let's see how that deformation works now. Um, here, that is okay, but I probably don't want as much of this side bending. I like how much this side's bend, but I want more of this to be stuck with the um, upper arm. So what we can do, I'm going to undo that really quick, and then I'm going to create a, uh, over here, a uh, joint uh, capture paint. And I'm going to put this, actually, right after the rig pose. I'm going to use the rig pose to be able to um, test the position. Actually, I can put the rig pose. Uh, let's just do this here, and let's connect this here. It doesn't really matter where it is, um, but I'm going to visualize this and then click on the joint capture node here. But actually, I want to first assign the deformation that I want to look at to make sure that I can paint it a little bit better. And then I can go into the joint capture here and I can test out what I'm painting. So um, I know that's going to be the shoulder. I can go in and select the left shoulder. And for some reason, I always have a trouble to find it. Um, those are all right, so they should be on the left. Here's the left shoulder, there we go. And then um, we can use the brush here. Also, if you have a pen tablet like I do, I can check that on and then I can go in and directly paint on there. Uh, by default, we have a set value at one, so it's gonna give us a 100% um, value on that, but what I like to do is add. Um, so I like to add a value onto a surface rather than um, trying to figure out what the final weight is. Um, you can, oops. But you can also see that um, it is going to, you're not painting on that deformed surface. Actually, if we put it over here, can we paint on the deformed surface? We can. So um, here I painted too much on this side. I don't want to um, add on there. I could either undo, which is okay. Um, or I can, um, add on to that other joint. So in this case, it'd be the elbow. I could find it in the list, or I can just go in here because I know my naming convention. And type in elbow, and then now it switches. And then I can go in and um, tweak those weights. And at any point, I can hold shift and smooth out that. And you can see that it redistributes the um, weights to other surfaces. Um, which I'm not the hugest fan of, but um, because I rather add, so I might just in make the value lower so I don't do as much um, crossover. Boom. So um, I'm gonna make the brush smaller, and then I'm gonna take this value here and put it at 0 0.01 maybe. And then I'm going to add slowly a little bit more as I'm going in there. Maybe that's a little bit. Too, oh, I put 0 0.001. I don't want that low, just 0 0.01. There we go.
and then you can tweak your weight as you wish. Maybe it's going too much over on this side. And then um, once you're happy with the way, I'm not exactly happy with this. I just want to do this as a demo for you guys. Um, you can go back in and I'm going to just tweak this a little bit here. Okay, let's say I was happy with that. And um, at this point, I will either bypass that um, pose there, or I'll delete it because I have my weights done. And then um, I can do any pose, create a rig pose. So I can connect a animation file in here, or I can go in and set animations for the character. So we worked on this one, so that we can try at frame one. Um, set a keyframe there, and then maybe uh, 24 frames later, we can rotate it, and then set a keyframe. And then now we have, oh, I didn't set a keyframe. Let's try that again. I missed, Tunk. and then set a keyframe. This time I did, and you can see that now we have that deformation happening. And you can animate anything th that you have on your character, really. Um, so let's say I had that and then I can, um, set keyframes and then there. And now we should have a little bowing motion. And he's still bending his elbow. So um, there you go. You got some little animation. Obviously, not great animation. You're just demoing what we're doing with the weights that we have here. But um, I'm just going to delete these rig poses here. And basically, I have a bound character with a skeleton at this point with kind of the minimum things that you need to be able to achieve that. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you very much. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.